20 years ago, a seed was planted and cared for. We painstakingly nurtured it and weathered it against adversity until one day it blossomed and the fruits of our labor began to show. Today, millions have learned, shared, and been inspired by what our community has produced. We proudly serve 21 million users from 204 countries in 2019. For our 85,000 technical articles, code samples, and videos, our 450,000 forum questions, and our highly anticipated conferences and events featuring keynote panels, live streams, and industry experts and influencers, we recognize and reward members for their dedication to the community. Through content contributions and mentorships, we ranked number 2,620 in the world with a reach of millions across our social media channels. Thanks to you, our global community of software and data developers grows stronger each day. For more information, visit us at csharpcorner.com. Good morning and welcome to another episode of Growth Mindset Show. How's everybody doing today? This uh, nice, sunny, warm, humid Friday. Uh, everybody, welcome to the show. My name is Mahesh Chan. I'm founder of C-Sharp Corner and host of this Growth Mindset Show. If you are joining us back, welcome back to the show. If you are joining us first time, welcome to the show. Um, in this show, our focus is really grow, growth mindset and focus around software developers and our C Sharp Corner members. Uh, if you are not a C Sharp Corner member, please uh, check it out. Um, there's a lot of things going on there. So today I will talk about that, what going on on C Sharp Corner recently. Uh, there's a lot going on. Atul, how are you? Good morning, everybody. Good morning to the Good afternoon, good evening, depends on where you are from. Venkat, I see Venkat, I see Atul, Naren Reddy. Uh, welcome to the show. Let's hang out. We're going to be hanging out here together for an hour. It's uh, 12 o'clock here, 12 o'clock. Good morning. First time you are welcome to the show. I hope you, you like it, what we do here. Um, so, yeah, let's get started. So what are we going to talk about today? Today is... Uh, focus on uh, career advice. So if you have any questions about your career, mostly in software development, you have questions about growth, how to, you know, I see one of some of the questions I see all the time people ask is, oh, how do I become a software architect? Oh, I have two years experience in .NET. How do I, you know, go to the next level? Or what new technology should I learn in .NET? Oh, I'm stuck in a project for so long and I'm not learning new things. So all those questions we will we will take uh, while I'm talking about this. But but if you are joining us first time, let me explain you. This show is all about you. This show is not for me. Uh, I'm here just to share my experience. What you know, for past 23, 24, 25 years, I have been in IT industry, mostly in software development. Uh, so if you have any questions and anything on your mind, uh, that's where I'm more focused. I want to help you answer those questions. So if you have any questions, start posting them there. Okay, we're going to start posting in your comments. We take questions live. And end of the show, if you're interested, you want to come live, hang out in the studio, you can also come join live. So let's get started. Um, it's Friday here, uh, and um, I'm sure everywhere it's Friday, including India, Asia, Europe, and uh, the US. It's noon around here outside of Philadelphia. It's really sunny and, and summer here right now. It's the summer peak summer, right? So probably 95 degrees. Um, and uh, summertime in the US, you know, things really, you know, they're slow. They're slower because a lot of people are on vacation. There's a lot of sports going on. In traveling going on I'm traveling every weekend uh, so every weekend we have sports I'm in different town different city uh, today I'm going to travel in the afternoon so 
that's why you probably see some of the, you know, some Fridays I don't have any shows. For example, next Friday, I don't think I will have a show. I will be traveling to Atlantic City where we have a tuna weekend tournament on basketball. So uh, let's start with a few things. Everybody, welcome. I see good morning. Welcome to the show. Pradeep is here. Deepak is there. Vakas. Uh, Bashir is there. Todd, you are your consider your first time from Facebook, joining us from Facebook. Welcome to the show. If one more thing I ask everybody is if you think you like this show and you are getting any benefit out of this, you think your friends and co-workers may get benefit out of it, please, please, please let them know. Uh, uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, Ravi definitely is always sunny in Philadelphia. That's not a true statement. Uh, it's winter is bad. Winter is not that good here. But yes, right now it's sunny in Philadelphia. Uh, oh, another one other thing I want to mention here is Azure Summit. So I'm not sure if you have seen. I'm sure a lot of you have already seen. Azure Summit is doing a fantastic job. The team is doing a fantastic job. It's becoming one of the largest conference ever. Ever, when I say ever. Oh, you see my colors changing? You see my colors changing in the video? That's because there is cloud outside, sometimes sunny, sometimes cloud, sometimes but kind of, that's why you probably see. I'm not doing any magic here, okay? So Azure Summit, I'm very excited about this uh, conference. It's going to be, uh, we were supposed to have this as a two-day conference. Then we turned it to three-day conference. Then it turned into five-day conference then became seven day conference and I have a feeling that we are going to continue to even add more days to this conference um, because there's so many speakers already applying, still applying and we already have 8,000 sign of registration. People have registered already 8,000 registrations already. That's the registration and imagine live is going to be, I think it's going to reach 50,000 plus people watching live. So that's something, check it out if you have not registered so far. Um, check out azuresummit.live, azuresummit.live. Um, and, you know, it's going to be exciting. It's, uh, it's going to be a uh, great, great learning experience for everybody. So before we take questions, we talk about career advice. A uh, couple of more things I want to cover here is... Uh, on C Sharp Corner, we just launched a, a new feature called uh, Challenge. Um, if you have not tried that, give it a try. Challenges are something fun to test your skills. So if you you want to test yourself how good you are in C Sharp language, there's a C Sharp Challenge, there is a Stratus Challenge, and there's just, I think yesterday, we just launched a Java Challenge. There's going to be Azure Challenge. So the goal is for every category, for example, React, Angular, C Sharp, .NET, all the Azure, we will have a couple of challenges. And challenge is basically simple, it's fun. You just go through these eight or 10 or 12 questions and depending on your skill set, you will see, you can learn and then you will see how good you are. So that's the challenge part. You check it out, C Sharp corner slash challenges. And uh, let us know, what do you think of that? We would love to have your any feedback, you know, uh, bad, good, whatever you find, any problems, issues, we are always, always looking for critics and good uh, good feedback that can help improve the platform. So with that said, we are eight minutes in the show. Um, it looks like more people are joining in. Everybody, welcome to the show. Feel free to post your comments. Feel free to ask your questions. No question is a bad question here, okay? We are not like other communities where if you don't know how to ask a question, we don't uh, blast on you. We don't. <laughs> every question is a good question. You can ask any questions. Not only you can ask career-related questions, you can also ask questions about community, questions about jobs, questions about MVP, whatever you have questions, just ask, okay? That's what we are here for. And asking questions also makes my job easy and fun because that keeps me engaged. And I don't have to think about, okay, what are we going to talk about today? Make sense? All right, Ramakrishnan, welcome to the show. Uh, hopefully uh, you enjoy the show. So, and also on my other side in the studio, I have Simon here who is behind the scene. We also have our social media team. They're always working behind the scene. 
uh, Simon in our team, you can also jump in and ask your questions as well. So we'll take all kind of questions today. Um, it's a more let it's more today is more about just putting any questions related to career advice. Uh, hopefully, COVID is getting better uh, at your place wherever you're joining us. I know there's cases are ups and downs and looks like we are not done with COVID yet. I just saw news this morning that COVID cases even in the U.S. now are rising. I thought we were kind of going down. And one of the challenges is that some people are just not getting vaccinated. We have a lot of vaccine here in the U.S. And now you can just walk in anywhere and get vaccinated right away. Uh, but there's a certain percentage of population. They just, uh, I don't know if they, they don't believe in it or they ignore it or they don't care. They think, oh, I'm healthy. I'm not going to get COVID. I mean, that's great that you have the confidence. But uh, again, this is something where if we are not combined together, if we are not working together, chances are this will still hang around for a while. So if you can go, please, please go ahead and uh, try to get the vaccine. Um, so uh, hopefully, and the and good thing with that is that it's not about you really. It's a, uh, it's gay. Yeah, Dave just said, Dave, welcome to the show. Get the damn shot. Yes, I said, get the shot. It's not really about you because even though you're healthy, even though you don't have any symptoms, but you could be the transmitter. You could be the, you know, conductor who takes the virus from one place, one person to pass it to somebody else. Uh, and that person could be somebody elderly, somebody who's sick. Uh, that's that's the that's the problem. That's the challenge. So, yes, please please go get the shot. Um, one more thing is uh, we are always on uh, C sharp corner events and conferences. We are always raising money for uh, you know helping kids, children who are in need. Uh, so if you are somebody who are able to donate, please go ahead and. And uh, donate on these conference websites. We have links everywhere. Uh, so, yes, I agree. Uh, I agree, uh, Todd. We have to get vaccine to prevent variants because they won't, they're going to continue to adapt. See, this this uh, COVID is very smart, right? Uh, it's just uh, it's just coming over the new forms and try to sneak us on. So until we get this whole thing 100% done, it'll be hard to get rid of it. So. All right, let's start the show. So we're going to start with the show. One of my favorite questions, which a lot of people are asked. Some of these questions I have compiled from C Sharp Corner Career Advice Forums. So if you don't know, there's on C Sharp Corner, we have something called Career Advice Forums, where you can post any questions, ask any questions about your career advice. And there are a few experts there. They're always asking them. So one of the, my, my favorite question here on this is, uh, is uh, um, I need help in choosing .NET technology. So this person, he said he's two years experience, he's a junior developer, he needs help choosing .NET technology. And as we all know, that .NET is a big you know, universe. .NET is just not a one platform where you just build one kind of app. In .NET, you can build all kinds of apps. You can build Windows apps, you can build you know, mobile apps, you can build uh, in web applications, you can build services, you can build cloud applications, so on and so forth. So if you have to learn a new, something new in .NET and make sure you have jobs in future and there's a big demand, what would that be? So if you ask me, and this all, my feedback all comes from what I see in the market, what I read it, and what kind of jobs are available in the market. Right now, there's plenty of jobs in .NET. If you are a .NET developer, there's big demand and as a matter of fact we can't find i talk to anybody we can't find in philadelphia area here we can't find enough dot net dot net developers who are and you know who are good so that includes asp.net mvc that includes blazor also azure cloud if you are doing anything like there's a lot of software being built uh if you are building apis web apis there's a lot dot net core and now probably dot net 5 will be going to be used for that for a while. So 
if you are in dotnet and you, you say you know what i want to upgrade myself so blazor is something you want to do where we build a web apis try to build and deploy that in azure and consume from azure that's that's something is everything is going to cloud right so azure is the closest to if you're a dotnet developers you will find as your home and also if uh, if you are also if you are you know something oh you are somebody who's new to azure you will get a free uh, free account there and there's a free credits available to you too so that's something i highly recommend other thing i'm seeing a lot is uh, is a uh, demand is obviously conversion from older dotnet to the newer dotnet now it's dotnet 5 there's dotnet core was wild uh, but now dotnet 5 migration is kind of start people start uh, paying attention to that because of the performance and uh, david talked on his show about about you know he has show where he talked about dotnet 5 how you know how good it is and 6 is coming soon too so look at that check it out so that's what i would do is probably make sure you have as your somehow somewhere in your learning path which is important get certified right azure has these developer associate and beginners all these certification get certification done uh, and david just said he's migrating to dotnet 6. Uh, and there is a question uh, here um, there is a question here is what percentage of is dotnet versus dotnet core well I think majority of the applications uh, were until now were .NET, and I don't know the exact number, but if I have to guess, it's probably going to be a big number, like 80 to 20, or even 85 to 15, or even 90 to 10. It's .NET Core has not, you know, there's a lot of old applications, .NET applications running in these big companies, even banks, financial institutions, and all that. They're not converting those, especially the FA, if the application was a big windows monolithic app or there's big asp.net applications even give an example our c sharp corner is still in net we have never converted in net core i just it's just a lot of work it's just a lot of effort but we are slowly thinking to migrate to blazor that's what we're going to do um so hopefully this answers the question that if you are in a net world uh, if you want to learn new technology what should you be learning that's kind of um that's what my advice would be um and then let's take more questions let's take one question from audience now before i go and pick my other questions yes that yeah dave said he's a good dotnet developer the only challenge we are hiring is that these companies need full-time employees full-time they're hiring for and obviously they want i know it's it's not ideal but they want somebody who's local they want somebody who can go in the sit in the meetings and uh, they are not 100 percent virtual yet uh that's unfortunate but uh i see a big trend that that there is going to be 40 percent of workforce now going to be virtual 60 percent is going to be in person when everything gets normal um yep all right so let's take another question uh, from Narendra. He said, is it possible to start and do a startup company while doing your job? So before I take this answer, this question, everybody who's joining us, welcome to the show. This show today is we are talking about the career advice. So if any questions you have, please feel free to ask. Uh, just post in the comments here. Uh, no question is a bad question. <laughs> you can ask any questions. It can be anything. It can You can ask about even what's behind my back on my wall behind my back so yeah whatever it is just ask any questions more questions are good so it keeps us everybody busy so let's go back to this startups right so if you are working in a company and you want to do your own startup so here's a uh, good news narendra and bad news there's you know both sides that depends on how you see a lot of startups companies start this way that people are working already on their jobs and they start this something side by side part time. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people do that. Um, I did that when I started Mind Cracker in uh, you know 99 2000. That's how I did. I was working, um, you know, I was working as an employee. Um, I was young, very young, and then side by side, I start this company. I start the company, start doing some smaller projects, and then once. The company start making enough money then i full-time moved to this uh this my company that's yeah it's no it, 
no problem doing that. So the only challenge sometimes is that because some startups don't have a lot of time. So if you have this creative ideas, which is very competitive, you're building say something app for food delivery, for example. And if you do this part time as a side, and this is not your primary job, what happens is other people end up building faster and launching, and then you just end up wasting a lot of time. So I see this kind of uh, startups all the time. I advise startups. But problem with this approach is that since you're not 100% focused, you just go too long, take too long, and things get boring, and your company goes nowhere. I, I, I see people work this for five, six years, and they're going nowhere because they feel like they don't want to quit their job. They still want to get the salary, and they all think like, okay, I'll just build this company, and it's going to take off itself. This is not really it works. It's very hard that way. I'm not saying it's not possible, but it's really hard to get that going because unless you are 100% focused. So the other approach people do is while they're working at the job, they slowly build like a POC or some kind of small concept, an idea that works, and then they go to investors. They go to investors and say, look, this I'm working full time. I already built this small POC and this idea and concept. It's kind of working. Now I need funding so I can quit my job hire more people, and then full-time focus on that. So that's kind of ideal. However, raising money can be also tricky. It's not that easy. So depends on what your situation is, there are some of the things you can do. All right, so let's take another question here from this. Uh, Todd says, I'm in Fortune 100 company, majority IT is Java, but my group is using 4.NET 4.6.2. Uh, with only Windows servers in .NET 5 is more viable than .NET Core. Yes, so 100%, and I think Dave, Dave can also reply this as well. .NET Core is pretty much done. There will be no more .NET Core. Everything is going to be .NET 5. Uh, good thing with .NET 5 is that this is more integrated, just one .NET platform for everything, including Windows. Um, and it's much faster. But they read, they read a lot of those uh, legacy libraries. They did a lot of work on compiler. They did a lot of work on even the, the engine. Uh, so everything is much faster in .NET 5. And I don't think it's hard to really, really migrate from 4.6 to 5 because sometimes if it's a Windows, I think it, there should be easy, easily portable options. And I saw some somebody wrote and published that, and I did try in one of my applications too. Some, if you can even just compile your ex existing same application and ch just change to .NET 5, you will get a lot of benefit just out of that. Uh, so yeah, if you have time to move to this .NET 5, that's great. Uh, but if not, then yeah, you can try to recompile the application in .NET 5 at least. And if your code base can still be same. I think all, all code base works, it's not, they have not deprecated to those libraries, right? So that should work. Um, and also, um, you know, we were talking on Twitter with Ravi and uh, Dave and all about Mao is the new framework coming for apps. So it's just uh, Mao is a new framework in .NET 6. I believe it's just announced where you can just use this to build all kind of applications. So you just build one code base and it will application will it's kind of building like a hybrid, right? So one, one applic you just build in this, it'll work on Windows and mobile and, and web as well. Yeah, so that's uh, something to think. It's too early for Maui, I think, you know, Dave was saying there are some issues in the template, visible suit template. But yeah, if, I, if you ask me anything, anybody who's building new applications in .NET, .NET 5, or even try .NET 6, because this is much diff not much difference in 5 and 6 besides this improvements. So it's not something that's going to break everything right away. Um, so hopefully that answered the question. Can we, let's take uh, more questions from here. Uh, and then what we will do is I have some of my own questions. And we'll talk a few other things as well, too. Um, and then we can also discuss, you know, non-questions as well. So you can put anything, comments out here, um, Simon. So here's a question, as a computer science student, how do I choose career path? How do I know in advance what career path is good fit for me? 
Okay, that's a very good question. And I think a lot of students uh, have this question and they they always concern and they don't know the direction and the path that they go to. And we all been through that. I've been through that. I'm sure they, everybody in the beginning, they all go through that. Um, so if you ask me, one thing is very important uh, for you to be happy at your job for long term is think of your interest. And interest should be come inside from you, not just what you read. Um, I see a lot of people talk to young guys and I was like, what are you doing? Like, oh, I'm doing Python. And why are you doing Python? Because, oh, everybody's doing Python. So that's not really what I'm talking about when I talk about your interest. And your interest means if you ask yourself deep down and which you need to dig in deep, sometimes you even don't know what you like to do really, what kind of applications you like to build. Are you, a, are you a, like a UI guys? You like to draw, create things, or you're like more like a coder where you just like to solve problems, algorithms, or you are like a database guy. You, you are more better into doing analytics and reporting and engineering from the data side. Uh, what kind of person are you? Uh, and you may not even know that right away. That's fine. Nothing wrong with it. Uh, just go start with one of the, anything you want. And I think one thing I, I want to really clarify here is that don't, don't wait around. For example, if you like machine learning and you say, you know what, I'm only going to do machine learning, don't just wait around. You can still learn other programming things. That's okay to learn data structure. That's okay to learn even any C sharp programming because all these combine in the in the big picture. When you are 15 years experience, 20 years experience, you will need all. Okay, you will need all of it. A little bit here, a little bit there, and you will figure it out what you like over time. Uh, but if you just say, you know, I don't know what to choose, and you're just waiting around, and there's confusion. You want to get out of that. Just do something, whatever the fastest way you can learn anything new. OK. Also, people ask, oh, should I do Java? Should I do .NET, C Sharp? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what programming language you choose. End of the day, you are solving a problem. OK. So as a software engineer or developer, you are a problem solver. Your goal is business comes up with a problem. Business says, oh, I have this problem. And your goal is to become that, solve that problem, regardless of what programming language, what the framework, what developer stack you're going to use, build the solution. Once you understand the problem solving, then everything else becomes easy, okay? So that's what I would focus on more algorithms. If you're young, algorithms, problem solving data, data structure is always important. Like how do you're going to take the data, how, Everything is important. Algorithms are very important. Um, so that's what I would do is pick anything. Doesn't matter. Uh, but when you pick a company, when you pick your very first company, and that may actually uh, impact your growth and how fast you move is very important, the picking the company. Sometimes you pick a large corporation. Sometimes you say startup. Sometimes you pick a medium company. Wherever you pick, doesn't matter. Your goal should be the project you're working in. Is there a learning opportunity there? Are you going to, you know, work on different things where you can, you we are involved in problem solving. Don't just join a big, large company where you're put in a corner and nobody's really paying attention to just give you some testing task, right? It happens all the time. You are a new guy, you're just a trainee or you just intern and they'll put you in a corner because nobody paying attention to it. Try to get into the team regardless of what company size is where there's a lot of learning opportunity. Let me add one more thing here. <laughs> Some people complain that, oh, I just joined this company and they're giving me so much work. I can't even handle that. If that's the kind of company you can find in your early career, that's probably the best thing happens to you. I bet you that's, and that's the company. You don't want to go to a company where they hardly give you any work because that's just going to change your habits and you're just going to learn bad habits of not working hard, not solving problems, not going through the stress of the solving those problems. That's important. OK, and I'm not saying that go join a company where somebody's always yelling at you and making you work 24 hours a day. I'm just saying 
you need to be in a project in a company in a team where they're giving you more than enough work you can handle in your time you have eight hours a day uh, in long run what it will do is it will benefit you a lot because you're gonna learn how to deal this how to deal with stress and how to handle world work pressure and also if you want to start your own as someday you already have this uh, habit of working hard anybody who works hard is successful almost i can guarantee that that's that's the that's you know so that's kind of my personal advice based on my experience i would give you is pick a company where you have a lot of learning opportunity where you have a lot of work and you try to solve a lot of problems where you're really hands-on, not just doing one thing. All right, hopefully that answers that question. Um, let's do more discussions here. Let's take more questions. Uh, yeah, uh, Simon, you got anything else? Let's, yeah, let's talk about some, uh, what's uh, Ravi's talking about here is, uh, and then we'll take Todd's question. Ravi says, um, uh, where's Simon go? Simon took a break. Uh, so, but in India, 90% of companies don't allow to work for money apart from their job. The way around is to start a startup. If uh, name of your wife, if she's not working. Okay, so you're saying that if you are already have full-time job, you may have conflicts with the company. Yeah, this is everywhere almost, right? Um, I mean, not legally, but if company finds out you're doing side job, uh, yeah, that's that's kind of nobody's going to like it. So that's the best way to start company. And yeah, that's fine too. That's fine too. Uh, anybody can be the owner in the company and you can do side works. Yes. And then again, continue doing that. This is, you know, for important for people who don't like their job, who don't love it and they want to build their own. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a way around. Um, all right, so let's uh, take more questions. Here's I have been working as a developer for a couple of years. Something start my own, starting my own. Do you recommend me a business degree before? Uh, there are two questions here, right? One is that you want to start your own business, and do you need a business degree? Um, degree is very relative, right? Some unless you're trying to become a an employee uh, and the most companies require a degree right so for example in computer science if a company is hiring you chances are they're asking for a minimum bachelor degree in computer science or application development or whatever um <laughs> it or computers yeah so it's not a bad idea to have a degree if you already have a degree that's a good but i don't think you need a business degree to start your own business that's not true nobody cares of you nobody asks for my business degree when you start a business and as a matter of fact most people who are entrepreneurs uh started their own companies may not even have a business degree at all yes a lot of them are computer science people in it especially if you are um so no that's uh, you don't need a degree um then not at all all right so but you need experience right so if you only have two years experience working for somebody and then you go to um, um, some other company or person to ask for a work that's where it'll be a little harder in the beginning because you need to prove yourself i need to see for example what have you done i need to see what kind of experience you have because biggest thing for me is the risk am i taking risk to give you a project right so if you are starting for example software development firm or consulting company if i hire you do you have enough experience so it's good to know for more than degrees the experience is more important than the degree that's what i'm really trying to explain here uh yeah all right so let's take uh, more questions i saw a question from todd um and fear it's going to be discussion yeah yeah, I agree. So Dad says that, you know, he's uh, 55 years old and in the, to learn is to shortcuts when you're under pressure and you learn more work less time. Yes. So productivity and always, yes, and always learning are two important things. Um, waste time is the, I, that's what people don't understand. The time is probably the most precious thing we ever have, which we cannot get it back. Money, yes, we can. Everything else, we can. But time is something that's not going to come. So 
if you tr you find a way to solve the same problem in less time yes very important um and yeah um and you will learn over time this is something you learn over time right it's not something that will come uh, today it's just a part of the experience as well yeah so definitely agree with that um Yes, we. Uh, so this is a good point, right? So let's. I want to talk this more. To what Todd just said, the specialty picks you more than what you choose. In my opinion, we are at the service of our employers. Yeah. So that's another thing, right? So people uh, don't understand that. I see this all the time as well when I get this talking to developers and young developers. They think that. Um, they're not growing in the company they don't get the growth and they always feel like it's somebody else's company so when you detach yourself from the company and thinking it's somebody else's company and i'm not saying that you're going to be go and slave and work for that company and just don't ask for anything that's not a question of i'm saying is that you need to first see like this is my work this is my project this is my company okay first you have to give that part and then if you're not getting in return that's a problem right people first expect that company will come and give them everything come what is company company is a made of people right company itself is nothing company is made of people people make company so and you are part of that so what however people are in the company that's what company is right so if you are a part of that and you're feeling like, yeah, I'm just here there to just do work, but I'm going to go home and do other things. Then you cannot also expect that company grow or you grow within that company. If you don't like the work, chances are you just try to find your own thing. Start your own business, start your consulting, become independent. There's so many options today. Uh, right now in this today's world where everybody's connected, everybody, work, almost everybody's worked remote last you know year and a half. There's so much out there. If you have the capabilities, if you have the skills, if you can offer something better than others, you have a lot of jobs today. Doesn't matter if you're a full-time employee, you are a consultant, uh, or you are a you are a you know you know independent contractor. Doesn't matter uh, if you freelancer, for example. Now, I see David's comments all the time, right? David's on Twitter all the time. Good friend. David's show is tomorrow, by the way. If you are interested, you don't know what David's show is, maybe Simon can put a link here. So David is posting that um, nobody's hiring. And he's having a hard time finding a job, and he's telling how bad these companies are. David, I love you. You know that. But here's my problem, right? If you already start complaining about the companies right away, good or bad, chances are these those companies are going to ignore you it's it's not that they're not a good company or bad company it's because they sometimes as a company you feel like that you're afraid of this taking hiring the person who can be the let's call it whistleblower right so i'm just giving my opinion that if uh, if uh, it's like sometimes you are a good guy but nobody wants you because they are afraid that this is a good guy. He's going to say right things about us, and it's going to basically blow up on our face because we we don't know we are doing everything right right way. So that's kind of that could be something you need to think when you are going for a company that you may be doing the right thing, but you have to also make sure if you're trying to get a job, you need to make sure that what company wants, not what you want. And I'm not saying that you should not be saying what you want. But who is the, in the need? Is that you or the company? If you need a job, you need to figure it out. What are you giving offering to the company so they can hire you? Uh, but if you are make yourself good enough expert in some kind of niche market that company wants you regardless, then you can say whatever you want because now they want you. So it's the other way around. It's all supply and demand, right? It's all supply and demand. So that's where... I uh, kind of get, you know, keep sometimes developers, and that's where I disagree with some people out there that they just complain. They complain a lot uh, about their company, about their boss, about their job. But here's the thing why are you complaining? 
there's so much other options are out there. They're better. If you think you're not happy here in this company, if you think you're not happy with your boss, go find something that's where you can be happy. That's where they will, they will value your expertise. They will value your opinion. They will value you, right? Go. There's so many options out there. We should not be just sit down and complain because to me, anybody who complains is like, why are you complaining? Just go make sure um, get better or something specialize in a field where people then come after you. That's where I've been. My philosophy has always been make yourself, you know, either expert in one field or, uh, you know, start writing articles, start speaking at the conferences and wherever it says, wow, this guy's the expert. I want this for our project. Guess what? Then you can put your own terms. So that's, that's the way approach. And then you don't need to complain, right? Because you know that what you're offering and they will listen to you. And most people are, you know, uh, like you see a lot of these MVPs, these are Microsoft regional directors. They are, that's how they are. Most of them, they are good enough that companies are always after them. So they don't need to really go after the jobs. So that's kind of my view. And how do you do that? Well, you continue learning new things. You continue um, uh, improving yourself. You continue, you know, speaking and promoting yourself, selling yourself. Um, other day on C-Sharp Corners Growth, um, C-Sharp Live Show, we just launched another live show called Seven Minutes of Selling. And I found it fascinating. It's not even done by software developer. It's not for software developers, it's for everybody. Um, so the, the person who's doing is Colin, good friend of mine, Colin Lake. He, his background is financial and sales, right? But we can also apply that in our lives as software developers. We can also learn from that how to sell ourselves, how to sell our expertise, how to sell our, you know, um, experience we have. So a lot of it is selling too from software developer side. We, you know, we are not good. We don't sell good ourselves, right? We are kind of, you know what to do. We know how to do, but we're not a good sales, sales people. So becoming good sales people is also can get you more out of your own, what you have right now. Can get a better salary you can probably get a better project you can get growth and raise in the company and you can even move higher in the level so that's another you can think is sales and sales also comes means communications communication is probably has to be the most important part of our lives regardless of personal professional or anything right if you're looking for growth so i always you know, my background is program. I started as a coder. So, you know, we are not good in communication. We don't pay attention. Uh, we just start building applications, writing code. But people who are, uh, move, who moves faster in the ladder and become more, you know, senior positions are the one better communicator, not the better coders. Okay. So that's how you have to think what you want in life. If you are happy in your life being coding, that's great. If you want to say, you know, I want more, I want this, I want this, then you have to figure it out. So that's kind of my, uh, it was a long, long discussion on one topic, but uh, yeah, again, you have to know your yourself and then what you want and then how do you get that? And, and that's where, you know, people like few people like Dave, David, we are like always telling that, you know, I, trust me, I fight with a lot of companies because I tell them what I feel like. And I like, you guys doing this stupid bullshit job, right? That's all those things. I said, this is nonsense. And then we get in trouble, <laughs> but I don't want you to get in trouble. Uh, so, you know, I, you know, David, and I, we can do that. We already been doing this so long, but you know, if you are trying to grow within a company, you need to understand what you have to do or say, and also show, uh, to move higher in the ladder. All right, so let's change the topic. Let's find some other questions. And then uh, I have some more questions here as well. Uh, and one of my questions I'm going to talk about is how to become an architect. And that's a lot of software developers ask that question. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to get some feedback from you. And David, if you want to jump in in the show for the last 10 minutes, I'm happy to have you in the in the studio here. Uh, we can talk more about the, you know, architect and code quality and .NET 5 and anything else. Uh, hopefully you're awake there. It's in, uh, it's a little early there in uh, California. All right. So 
everybody who's uh, joining us here i see more people join welcome to the show as you know this is a growth mindset show but today we are talking about career advice general tic tac jobs uh growth um it's uh, 15 more minutes to go if you have any questions feel free to ask those questions you want to hang out with me in the studio come join me in the studio behind the scene and get on the screen uh, simon just posted a url so Simon, one thing I don't understand is I think okay. So you're posting this comment. So if I'm on YouTube, I can just click on comment to get in the studio. Okay, I get that's okay. That works. That works. I did not know that because I um, yeah I saw the comment. All right. So any more questions? Uh, I see more questions from Venkat here. Uh, you want to take some more questions? Um, I like, yeah, there's a lot of questions. Can we take a few more questions here? But I also like, uh, I'll take you out towards the comments that Dave, let's create a product together. I think that's a great idea. That's a fantastic idea because looks like some of guys, you know, you definitely don't like to work for a company. The best way now to do is figure out your own thing, which you love to do. And then you can enjoy that. I think I'm in for this thing. Let's do something. I agree. Um, Let's take some questions here. Uh, Venkat's question is how to build a new a new capability in a company? What are the things to consider? Uh, I'm not sure really what this question is. It's not clear. So maybe you mean are you are you the are you the in charge in the company who are introducing new capabilities? Is that what it is? Um, it's just uh, or you're just trying to introduce a new technology to your team. For example, it's then that just is more like a learning curve. Uh, so maybe you can elaborate this question more. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, sorry, unfortunately, I, I didn't get the question. All right. Do you think AI is going to take our jobs in the future? Um, <laughs> so, uh, some jobs, yes, uh, but it doesn't mean, see, uh, if you go back in the 20, 30 years, 40 years back, I remember I was in India and we had a president, my favorite president, he was a farmer when I was a young child. Since he was a farming background, he wasn't too happy with the computers. He said when computers will come, they will take all farmers' jobs and we will, farmers will have no jobs. Uh, the president, uh, the, the prime minister name was Chaudhry Chiranji. Uh, and I was a child there. And I kind of agreed with him. But a few years later, uh, other prime minister came and he introduced computers uh, to the uh, country. I don't think it has impacted any jobs for farmers, even though computers were introduced. Um, and then recently, there's newer technologies coming. And some jobs obviously disappear. For example, right now, electric vehicles are coming. When electric vehicles are coming, there's not going to be jobs for coal miners or for gasoline companies and all that. That's all. Uh, that's obvious. But there's going to be more jobs in electric vehicle space. This is it's a shift. It changes, right? Same thing with AI. Even AI comes. This may take some of the automation jobs. Yes, but it will create more new jobs. So who benefit from that? People who are always learning and adapting are the one who always gets benefit from it. So if you make yourself, you know, adaptable to any environment and learn new things and keeping yourself upgradable, there will always be job. But I don't think AI is not something that can tomorrow wake up and say, hey, I'll do everything for you guys now. You just get out of here. There's no jobs. That's not going to happen. Um, so, yeah, there's, look at right now. There's so many jobs out there. If you have skills, you have capabilities, you're a hard worker. There's so many jobs. Um, in the U.S., we can't find enough people right now in any industry. Uh, that's just, that's just uh, something crazy happening. Nobody's thought of it. Um, all right. Let's put more questions here. Uh, it, it's not illegal, sir, if you start your own company on your name while working in a company. Uh, yeah, I mean, this you have to look at your contract. I don't think it's illegal. But you have to look at your contract. Um, I think in any country you can start your own company while you're working, but you cannot be doing same job or similar space. You have a 
uh, something called non-compete. So non-compete agreement is very important because it says if you are working in a software consulting company, you cannot go and start your own software company, the consulting company. That's illegal. That's kind of against the, the contract you have signed with the company and they can actually go and sue you. I've seen this many times. Let me repeat this again. So there is something called non-compete agreement, which you are going to sign when you become an employee. So it says that you cannot start similar company. You cannot go to same clients. Sometimes it even says you cannot start a company within so many miles of that company. Not only while you are working there or even after you leave a job. So most companies will have a contract for, you know, it's called non-compete where it will say, if you work with our join, you join this company for first, after you are done the, with the job, not when, what your job, after you are done with the job within for next three years after that, you cannot start a similar company or similar space or even in similar industry. You cannot be in same industry. I have seen non-compete agreement where uh, if you sign, I cannot start or get a client in say Philadelphia area within like 50 miles of radius because I'm working on them. Or sometimes it says we are a bank. You cannot work for next three years after you're done with us for next three years. You cannot work with any client that's in the banking industry. So you have to look at your contract, but yes, it's, you cannot start similar same industry business if you're working in a company because that's against, again, you're, com it's a, you're competing with the same business. Um, all right, let's take more questions here. Uh, any more questions? No, while we're waiting on the questions, is anybody joining behind the scene? Uh, what's going on, David? You are on. All right, so hopefully that answered the question. We only have uh, nine more minutes left, so let's uh, let's take uh, let's uh, put my favorite question is that. I have a few more questions came from C Sharp Corner Forums. What is the most demanding and high paying technology? This is one of the questions I picked up from the forums. What is the most demanding and high paying technology of today? So, so right now, if you look at the job trends and salaries and demand, the biggest demand right now is the cloud and anything in the cloud, cloud you know, cloud migration, digital transformation, AI, machine learning, data science. Uh, those are the, some of the big ad fields with, with other many others, right? That's that's the most demanding right now is if, uh, um, so if you're looking for a job in next year or two and say, you know, I want to make more money than others, those are the something you want to focus on. Also, you can make money by specializing in a field where there's less number of people. There's less number of people and there's demand coming up. That's again, you can get a lot of money. Um, so for example, blockchain is one of the technologies that's gonna grow, continue to grow. But if you're a blockchain architect, it's a, it's a, you can, and if company is looking for it, you can ask a very good price for your salary for that or, or a contract for that. So again, it really depends on uh, what field you are in and if you are willing to become that expert in, in one field. I think if you have this niche market, you have this specialization in one of those, that's always a plus, you know, uh, always a plus because there's not too many people there. But if you are one of them where everybody's doing that, everybody's learning that, then it's like it's very com it's competition. Again, it's supply and demand. So uh, cloud, data cloud data um ai machine learning um these are all in big demand right now okay let's take uh, look, another question we'll take a couple of more questions yeah sorry you want to tell something about architecture please explain yeah so what my question one of my question i'll take is how to become an architect you want to become a, an architect really means here i'm talking about a software architect like how do you architect this new software system? That's what architects do. Um, I think I've written an article on C-Sharp Corner as well, detailed article on that. Um, 
So to become an architect, first of all, um, it's funny, some of the guys who just starting a job and they are one year experience, they're like, I want to become a software architect uh, tomorrow. Uh, this is not how it works. <laughs> uh, one of the things is it takes time and it's experience is very important. To become a software architect, experience is very important. Uh, it requires at least some experience. So the best way you can become an architect is obviously start reading the documentation, articles, books, uh, watch video trainings. But with that, also try to get involved in project where you are close to the architects who are building existing systems, right? Who are try to be in the meetings where software architects are doing, deciding, okay, what are the requirements? How do we architect the system? How do we think? I'm not sure everybody can just go and jump into those meetings, but try to find a project or a company where you're more involved in that. Or you can even say, ask your company, hey, do you mind if I sit and learn more about architecture? And I'm just going to be, you know, you got to be proactive about it. Um, and then, then that's, that's probably the way to do it. If you don't get a chance in your own company or in the team, maybe you want to start your own system. You want to start building your own, let's say, website and see how you're going to architect, where you're going to store the data, as a, what database you're going to choose, what APIs you're going to uh, build, uh, what kind of local cache you're going to use, how the UI look like, are there different components, so you can also do that. Now you say you I can I don't have time for do that. I don't have my company is not going to offer me that. Maybe you want to work with a couple of people in a group, and then when you work on a group with the with the project yourself, then you end up doing everything, right? Which includes architecture, includes requirements, includes writing code, includes testing, includes deployment and maintenance. So that's another way to do that. But again, try to learn first what architects do, try to um, get involved with them, try to ask questions and then read uh, read books on them. You don't even need to buy anything these days. You can just go online and search Azure Architecture Best Practice Guidelines and you can start reading them. So hopefully that helps. Hey, good to see you back here, uh, uh, Ledger. Uh, Leg yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I see. Good to see you back here and the in the studio, I mean, the show, live show. Thanks for joining. Coming, say hi. Uh, Todd had, what's his thoughts here? Uh, can you, yeah, can you click on this Todd here? Let's put on the screen here. Yeah. Doing conversations to the cloud, conversions to the cloud. Uh, come in, do the conversion, move it to the next project or company. Do this as a contract or a company will pay bucks. Bring it up. Yeah. Of course, I don't listen to my own advice. I'm 30 years. <laughs> yeah, so it, it, listen, uh, the goal is really, it's not about, oh, I'm full-time employee or I'm a contractor or I'm in on my own company. Goal is really, is that what you really want to do? If you, you're happy with that pro job and all that, and sometimes, sometimes in life, we make these easier options. They are, you know, there's security, job security, right, you know, you know, it's okay, I don't need to, you know, I, it's flexible job, gets you vacation, gets you holidays, still get paid, sick leaves and all that. Uh, but if you start your own company, there's a lot of challenges as well, right? Challenges are, and that's people don't realize, biggest challenge you start your own company is that uh, nobody's paying you. If you don't work, you don't get paid. You take vacation, you don't get paid. If you're sick, you get not <laughs> So it's like a lot of challenges until you really and go ahead and establish your own company. And there's no guarantee that every year you're going to get a growth. There's no guarantee that you're going to have a stock options or a you know, retirement plan. So it's, a, it's, it's challenging for both sides. And you have to find the way what makes you most happy and successful, what drives you, right? For me, for example, I don't seem, I, I cannot work for a company. I cannot work for anybody because uh, I move fast. I like quick decisions, and it frustrates me if things are taking time and and the you know guys are not learning. So you have to find that your your own space. What makes you happy? That's the end goal of life, right? Uh, and it's nothing wrong with being employee, or nothing wrong with starting your own company, or nothing wrong with doing both. You have to find that what makes you happy. So with that said. Uh, Anybody coming in, Simon, to say hi? If not, then uh, we can just uh, be done with this show. All right, so nobody else joining us behind the scene today. No worries. 
uh, what we can do is is now time is running out one last minute so i want to kind of remind everybody that this is summertime here in the us and i'm sure some a bunch of other places as well uh, this month and some next month it's going to be slow uh, because of travel vacations holidays and so on and so forth so stay tuned for next week i will not have the show but week after hopefully we will continue the show every friday uh 12 noon eastern and everybody thank you everybody hanging out with me on this friday uh great questions great feedback good um, good uh, you know chit chat i had fun so everybody thank you so much and hopefully i will see you next week or uh, no week after everybody have a safe uh, weekend and stay away from covid thank you